I've been married for 12 years to a man who's turned out to be a manipulative deadbeat, and now my best friend is pregnant with his child. My husband Dev and I have been dating since I was 21 and he was 23. We were a thing for nearly two years before he proposed to me. We have been married for the last 12 years and have two kids together. During our second year of dating, Dev introduced me to his mother, Mallory. I liked her from the first meeting and tried my best to impress her, but unfortunately the feeling wasn't mutual. You see, Mallory had been a widow for a long time since her husband passed away from a heart attack years ago. She has raised Dev alone so they are obviously really close. You can say that he is a bit of a mama's boy and was nervous about letting me meet his mother. He has always desperately wanted her approval in everything he does. The main reason Mallory has never liked me is because I come from an upper-middle-class family with parents who own multiple businesses. Growing up, I had quite a comfortable life, although my parents supported me by covering my college expenses and buying me my first car so I could get to work on time, they also instilled the value of being independent and finding my own footing in life. I have always worked hard to support myself and never asked my parents for any financial help after I graduated college. Contrary to my life, my husband had a more difficult life. His father worked in the military so he was seldom present in his life and after his father passed away, he and Mallory were joined at the hips. Mallory was an alcoholic so Dev, from a very young age, had to take care of his mom. He started working at McDonald's very young as a part-time job to earn extra money. When he was in college, he had to drop out because he didn't like pursuing his communications degree anymore. He has told me how unhappy he was during this time. Being a college dropout, it was very difficult for him to find a job which is why he started to look for easy options that would not require a degree. He started working as a freelance writer and surprisingly was able to do quite well for himself. He loved traveling and was a digital nomad for a few years before finally meeting me and settling down. Throughout all this, his mother would ask him to monthly allowance, which he willingly provided despite the strain it placed on his finances. When our relationship started getting more and more serious, I finally decided to tell him about my family and our generational wealth. He did not believe me but was shocked after he googled my family. Dev got pissed at me that I had been hiding it for so long and accused me of not trusting him. I tried to clarify to him that a lot of people in my past wanted to be with me because of my family, which is why I had learned to wait before revealing my generational wealth. He understood and was mostly fine with it, but occasionally he would taunt me about how I never have to try so hard or how I will never know how it feels to work hard. This would really offend me because despite what my parents had offered me in life, I did work hard to establish myself in my field. I loved managing influencers and brands and this is how I funded my entire lifestyle without needing my parents' help. Dev never understood this and this should have been my first red flag. When we decided to move in with each other, Dev was quick to say that he should move in with me since I had a bigger place. I agreed and then started discussing how we would be splitting rent but Dev didn't like that. He started telling me how he earned so little as a freelance writer and that because I come from old money, I should prove my love for him by helping him out. In this case, it would be by paying for his share of the bills as well as rent. I told him that although I didn't think this was fair I could let him go for the rent but he had to pay his own bills. This made Dev raise his voice on me and he started to go off on a rant about how I was selfish and that if I didn't agree to pay his bills, then it would show how cruel I was. We argued back and forth and I finally caved in. I had to cut back on a lot to pay for all our bills but I was madly in love with him. Meanwhile, Dev would continue sending his mother monthly allowances and buying her extravagant gifts through all this. Whenever I would point out how he had the money to send to his mother yet he wouldn't pay the bills, he would get angry and tell me how his mother needed the mother more than us and that she was just a single, old parent. I would then feel guilty about it so I stopped bringing this up again altogether. When Dev proposed to me for marriage, I was ecstatic. To be honest, looking back, he put the least effort into proposing to me. I thought at least for once he would not be stingy and would go all out for the proposal but turns out he thought proposing to me in our backyard was a good idea. To his credit, he did ask my parents for my hand like a gentleman. My mother, who absolutely adored Dev, suggested to him that he should get help from my best friend Kylie to plan the proposal for me. He agreed and they both came up with this genius idea, facepalm, of proposing to me in my backyard in front of my entire family and friends. You see, Kylie had been my best friend since I went to high school. Her family is like my family and vice versa. My mom and her mom grew up together since their childhood which is how we both became friends. We have always been solid with each other. She was like my sister and my soulmate. We have done everything together. Her mother absolutely adores me just like my mother loves Kylie like her own daughter. When Dev and I started dating, I of course introduced him to Kylie and they became good friends also. Kylie helped Dev not only plan the proposal but also choose my ring. To be honest, I was a bit taken aback by the surprise proposal but seeing how my family was gathered there to celebrate my happy day with me made me feel much better even though I was a bit disappointed about being proposed to in my backyard. My mother Kylie and Kylie's mother were the first ones to hug me and congratulate me. Dev's mother Mallory was also happy for us and told me how she had high expectations for me as a daughter-in-law and that she hoped I would do everything in my power to keep her son happy. That was a happy night for all of us. Eventually Dev and I did get married and even after marriage, I have continued to pay for everything around the house while he doesn't spend a penny on me. I continued to pay for our weekly dates or our yearly vacations because Dev insisted that he was saving up money for our future. 
When I got pregnant with James, our first child, I was forced to quit my job since it was a difficult pregnancy. Dev didn't like that when he first found out and started arguing with me about how I needed to work, otherwise we would not have money to sustain ourselves with a child. This made me cry a lot, and this is when I opened up to my parents for the first time about our situation. While my mother sympathized with Dev instead of with me telling me how Dev was right, and that there are hundreds of mothers who continue to have a job while pregnant, my dad, on the other hand, was pissed. He called my dad to give a piece of his mind, and told Dev firmly that it was time for him to be a man and step up for his family. He warned Dev that if he continued to behave this way with me, then he would not make his daughter go through his suffering, and it was better for us to get a divorce. This made Dev quite nervous hearing my dad bring up divorce. Although I never wanted to divorce my husband, he and I had signed a prenup at the insistence of my father before our marriage which meant he knew that I would no longer be there to fund his extravagant lifestyle, and he would lose this house and his expensive car which were all under my name. So for the first time ever, Dev stopped sending his mother any allowance and started paying all the bills around the house. I did continue to pay the rent since I had more than enough savings. Because he stopped sending Mallory any money, this made her resent me even more. She was getting to freely sponge off her son and when he stopped giving her any access, she blamed me. When I first gave birth to James, I was extremely happy. Everyone visited me and our brand new baby in the hospital to congratulate us. Kylie stayed with me at the hospital for days until I could recover and come back home since Dev was busy with his work and refused to look after me or the baby. Once I was back home, being a new mother made me quite nervous. This is when my parents and Kylie's mother would help me out as much as they could. Mallory, on the other hand, would do nothing to help. Whenever she would come to visit James, she would only remark negatively about me like how I needed to start losing weight or how I should tend to James as soon as he started crying. Her unsolicited comments were always directed at me and never once at her son who didn't lift a single finger to help me out. After giving birth to James, I found myself overwhelmed with a profound sense of exhaustion and loneliness that crept in. I did not know at that time but I was going through postpartum depression, PPD, which a lot of mothers go through but seldom talk about. Despite my best efforts to communicate my needs and share the responsibilities of parenting, Dev remained distant and unwilling to engage in any way. He would tell me how it was solely my responsibility as a mother, and that he didn't want to look after a baby since he had no idea how to do anything. As I grappled with the demands of caring for our newborn, managing household tasks, and coping with PPPD, Dev's reluctance to help out only deepened my sense of despair. He would even refuse to change a single diaper or feed James. With each passing day, the weight of my responsibilities grew heavier, and the burden of PPD became increasingly suffocating. Despite my attempts to reach out for support, I felt as though I was drowning in a sea of overwhelming expectations and unmet needs. This is when I decided to open up to my parents about my mental health. While my dad was understanding, my mother refused to believe that there was anything wrong with me. She told me that PPD was not a thing and that I should be strong enough for my baby to get through anything. When I complained to her about Dev refusing to help me out, she scolded me saying that Dev is the father and I should do a better job as a mother. It hurt that my own parent couldn't see how hard I was struggling and it felt like I was drowning. With my mother's refusal to believe me, Dev's lack of effort, and my mill's constant negative taunts, I continued to remain in depression. My best friend Kylie, on the other hand, was my constant support. I would tell her everything about my marriage and she would sympathize and hear me out. She would also tell me how Dev was a shitty husband and a parent and would get pissed at his antics. It felt good to know that besides my dad, I had Kylie's support as well at such a tough time. A year later, to my shock, I found out that I was pregnant again. This was an accident because I didn't want another child so soon, but I wanted to trust in God's plan, so I decided to go along with it. Dev was pissed, to say the least. He told me that I needed to abort the pregnancy ASAP CP, since we couldn't afford another baby. This made us argue and in the end, I decided that it was time for me to get back to work. I contacted my old boss who was happy to have me back as a freelancer until a more permanent position would open up. Although my second pregnancy was difficult as well, I was determined this time due to my added responsibility as a parent. This time when I went back to work, I decided to no longer deposit my entire paycheck in our joint savings account. I wanted to think and be prepared for my future, as well as my kids, so I started to keep 50% of my paycheck, and only the rest 50% would go to our joint account. Once I started earning money, Dev would become lazier every day. He suddenly started to complain every day how he disliked his job and that he wanted to quit it. I would try to talk him out of it, reminding him how he doesn't have a college degree so he needed to stick with this job that paid him so well. This would piss him off since he didn't like to be reminded that he was a college dropout. Dev would tell me how I had taken a break so he deserved to take a break also. I argued with him that I never took a break but that I was pregnant and struggling while forming another human being inside of me. Despite our arguments, Dev decided to quit his job saying that we had enough savings and that now that I was earning money, he could rest for a while. He would then spend his entire day video gaming while I would do household chores, look after the baby, and work at my job. I would leave James with my parents whenever I went to work since my mother didn't mind watching him. When I would come back home after picking up James from my mother, I would see Dev sitting in the same spot on our sofa playing his video games. This went on for a while and I started to grow tired of picking up all the responsibilities as a parent so in anger, I confronted him about how he needed to spend time looking for a new job. 
James didn't like that which is why he started to go to his friend's place every day where they would both play video games. His friend Clinton was a middle-aged divorcee whose wife had cheated and left him. This made Clinton resent every woman and he was quite misogynistic. This is also why I didn't like meeting him or going to his place. As Dev started to spend more and more time at his friend's place, our arguments would also increase. I was getting tired of being a single parent since Dev literally contributed to nothing but I held on for the sake of my children. When I gave birth to Nina, our second child, Dev was apparently so busy that he forgot to check my multiple calls and messages when I went into labor which is why he missed it. I never once suspected him even though these red flags were visible. Kylie was also missing when I called her for help so in the end, my parents had to take me to the emergency room. She came the next day to visit me and the baby and told me how sorry she was for not being there for me since she was stuck at work which was quite alright with me. After Nina was born, I finally put my foot down and told Dev that this was his last chance, and that if he didn't go back to work then I was going to pack my things and leave. This resulted in a huge fight between us but I didn't care anymore. I knew that as my children's mother I needed to be with someone who could be equally responsible, because it would be impossible for me to take care of everything now. I told him that I would never hold anything against him, and that he was free to walk away but James told me that he would start looking for a job the next day. This was unexpected of him to say since I expected him to resist or start arguing with me but surprisingly, he agreed with me or so I thought. The next day, while my husband was in the shower and I was taking his dirty clothes for laundry, I heard a ping on his phone. I turned my head to see a message on his lock screen from a familiar number. I stopped breathing as my eyes widened shock. I picked up the phone to click on the message that said, when will you be telling her about us? I am pregnant and can't hold off the news any longer. I was frozen in place as I kept rereading the message. When my husband got out of the shower, he saw me standing still with his phone in hand. He rushed to snatch his phone from my hands, but it was too late. I kept the laundry bin down, walked towards my husband, and slapped him as hard as I could. I didn't even think twice and it felt like my body was possessed by someone else. I was shaking in anger and my husband was shocked by my reaction as well. His eyes widened in shock as he put two and two together and started stammering about how this was all just a big misunderstanding. I looked him straight in the eyes and told him that he was dead to me. I packed my bags and packed the kids' bags and drove them to my parents. My parents were shocked to see me standing in their doorway with my children and luggages in tow. Seeing them, I broke down and told them everything. I have been crying continuously for the last two days as I just can't believe how my life has ended. I have told my boss everything and she has graciously allowed me to take a few days off. Honestly, I am at a loss for words which is why I am on Reddit. My best friend of 20 years decided to betray me by sleeping with my husband of 12 years. Not only this, she is now pregnant and this means that Dev and my marriage is pretty much over. Dev and Kylie have been calling me multiple times and sending me messages saying how I should at least hear them out but I refuse to do so. Dev is begging me to not divorce him saying how I should think about our children. Ida, if I went on to divorce my cheating husband and take away everything from him? Update 1 Hey guys, thank you for your multiple messages and comments on my post. I know it's been a month since I left you all hanging without an update but a lot has been happening in my life so I have been dealing with it. I am back at work since no matter what happens in life, I can't miss my work for so long. Honestly, work feels like a welcome distraction to me during this time. A lot of you people suspected right about Dev and Kylie of cheating on me for a long time. Kylie sent me a long message saying how she didn't mean to but she has apparently fallen in love with Dev, and now that she is going to be a mother, she has to think about herself which is why she had been pushing Dev to tell me while Dev on the other hand. He knew he would lose access to an extravagant life if he lost me. He knew he had made a mistake and in his words he just wanted to sleep with Kylie but because she is now pregnant he has no way out. He has been begging me to forgive him and even has gone as far as to tell me that we can probably convince Kylie to give up her baby and raise the baby together. I mean his delusions and entitlement fuel my anger even more. Now as for how they both got together, it turns out Dev had been opening up to her for a while behind my back while he was out playing video games the whole day about how he is mentally distressed in his marriage with me since I had been forcing him to get a job. He said how Kylie understood him and listened to his problems and when he opened up about this to Clinton. His best friend instead of telling him how wrong this was started to encourage him to meet up with Kylie saying how she was clearly more of a woman than me this is how Kylie and he met up one day just to talk and that two-faced woman decided to sleep with my husband. I don't know what her motivation was even though she already knew how shitty of a dev was to me but at this point I honestly don't care. Kylie has also mentioned in her messages how I should be happy that I was taking him off my hands since I had wanted to leave him but didn't have the courage to do so. Maybe this was her plan all along but who knows. Honestly, I am glad that she decided to take my trash, and now she can live her whole life regretting ever meeting a man like Dev. I am also sure the day I went into labor, they both must be together which is why both of them had not picked up my calls for help. But this isn't even the cherry on the cake, when I first told my parents about Dev and Kylie, my mother refused to believe me while my dad called Dev and shouted at him for a good 15 minutes. Even when I was crying, my mother tried to say how I could be wrong about this since there was no way that Kylie would betray me this way. I called up Kylie's mother to tell her everything and unlike my mother, she was pissed. She didn't even question me and was completely on my side since she knew I would never make up such a thing. 
She kept repeating how sorry she was and she cried with me for a while. She really understood how betrayed I moment. After talking with my dad, I have decided to file for divorce. We already have a lawyer in mind and with my prenup and Dev's cheating, this divorce proceeding is going to be easy. What might be tricky is when it comes to the custody of my children, but I know that James will never want any responsibility for them so I am confident I will get full custody. But throughout all this, my mother has been vehemently against my decision to divorce. When she realized that no matter how much she requested me to not get a divorce, I wasn't going to listen she seemed to have changed her tactics suddenly and started saying how I should give up full custody of my children to Dev. This took me by surprise when she first suggested it but I thought she was joking at first. But when she continued saying this for the last few days, I finally lost my temper today and started shouting at her about how dare she suggest something like this to me, but she didn't say anything and walked out of the room. Her behavior has started to make me feel extremely suspicious. Why would my own mother ask me to give up custody of my children when she knows that Dev is not a capable parent? I feel I need to sit down and confront her in front of my dad to find out exactly what she has in mind. Update 2. It's only been a few days since my last update but my DMs are flooded with people coming up with their own theories. I know for some of you, this might seem like an entertaining story but for me, this is the reality of my life. My lawyer has served divorce papers to Dev and he called me crying like a man-child begging me to forgive him but I just laughed at his misery and told him to get ready to lose everything. James and Nina are doing well despite this family turmoil. Dev never spent much time with them so they hardly noticed that he is missing. It has been very difficult for me to take care of a baby while going through all this but I am glad to have my dad's support. Kylie's mother also came to visit me since she lives in another city. She hasn't bothered to even talk or listen to Kylie and has told me how she plans to cut her off since this is an embarrassing situation, not just for my family but also for her family. She says how ashamed she is of her own daughter. She also knows how deadbeat of a father Dev has been so she knows that eventually Kylie will be contacting her for financial assistance which she is vehemently against. The news of my divorce due to Kylie's backstabbing has spread to my friends group as well as my relatives and everyone is on my side. People are not that forgiving so they started sending foul messages to both Kylie and Dev abusing both of them. This is when Mallory finally gave me a call. Throughout the last month, she didn't have a single ounce of decency to call me for comfort or to apologize. I am sure she knew about all this and was probably ashamed that her picture-perfect son messed up his great life and knocked up another girl. She called to tell me how Dev was suffering so much since everyone in his family had also found out about his indiscretions, and was I kept quiet as she unabashedly continued to say how as a good daughter-in-law I should return back to him and retract the divorce proceedings. She tried to justify her son's vile actions by saying how men can sometimes stray from the path but that it was our responsibility as women to bring them back. I couldn't hear her nonsense any longer so I asked her to shut up. She was taken aback by the sudden rise in my voice since I had always been good and respectful to her. I told her that she should be ashamed of giving birth to a worthless man like Dev who was nothing but a leech and that if she ever called me back, I would make sure to take every single penny of his during our divorce by bleeding him dry. I reminded her that I was the one who had taken care of her man-child our entire marriage so she had no right to ask me for anything more now that he has knocked up my best friend. Mallory tried to apologize as a last-ditch effort to protect her son, but I warned her that I would take legal action against her if she ever called me again. It felt good to finally stand up to her and show her that I was not the same timid dill that she had met. Dev was going to get exactly what was coming for him and no one will be able to protect him. I also sat down to talk with my parents yesterday to have a talk regarding my mother's suspicious behavior. I had already given a heads up to my dad about how she had been forcing me to give up full custody of my children so he was ready to find the truth from her. I straightforwardly asked my mother why she had been asking me to give Dev full custody of my children even though it was never going to happen. My mother first hesitated but my dad kept grilling her and finally she opened up. To our shock, my mother told me how after I had revealed to my parents about Kylie and my husband sleeping with each other, she had decided to confront Kylie about it since she didn't believe me. They met up and Kylie started begging her for forgiveness. My mother couldn't believe that Kylie had really done something like this but then Kylie started to tell her how she was pregnant and she needed Dev to raise her child. My mother, instead of shouting at her, apparently felt sorry for her. She promised to help her out financially and tried to convince her to not break up my and Dev's marriage saying how Dev could continue to support her child even if he was married to me. Kylie didn't want that so then my mother changed her tactics and started telling Kylie that if she was responsible for breaking up our marriage then she should be responsible for raising the kids as well. Kylie was shocked at first to hear this, but my mother told her I suffered from PPD, so I was not a capable mother the least that Kylie could do was raise Dev's children all together as a family since they all would be siblings anyway. She told her that I was never going to let Dev be a part of my children's lives, and according to my mother apparently, my children needed a healthy parent like Dev more than me since according to her I am mentally sick. My mother even went as far as to convince Kylie by saying that if I gave up full custody of my children then I would be required to pay a hefty child support, which Kylie could use to take care of her child also. This convinced Kylie which is why my mother had changed her tunes and had been forcing me to give up custody of James and Nina. When my dad and I grilled this information out of her, we were disgusted, to say the least. I couldn't believe that I was facing yet another betrayal in my life.
My own mother thought because of my PPD I was incapable enough to raise my own children, and she would rather have Kylie raise them than me. It shocked me that my mother failed to see how I fell into PPD in the first place, because Dev refused to help me in any way. How I used to beg him to be an equal parent while he would feign ignorance. How I would single-handedly take care of everything while he would look for an excuse to give up responsibility in any way. Started to cry since I didn't know how she could betray me like this after my husband and best friend did the same thing. My dad, who had been quiet for a while, asked my mother to simply get out of the house. My mother started crying as they kept arguing but my dad told her that their marriage was over. He didn't want to see her face anymore. I don't remember much but eventually my mother left to stay at her sister's place. I honestly don't know what to do. It feels like I can't trust anyone anymore. Everyone seems to betray me like I mean nothing to them. Update 3. It's been 6 months since my last update and I know it's been a long, long time. Thank you again. Seriously, your comments, your support, your messages, all of it has been one giant breath of fresh air. Just knowing I have a whole online community willing to go to bat for me has kept me treading water these last couple of months. Your comments have popped up in my notifications when I felt like just giving up on my life when it was too hard and has kept me going. First things first, I got my divorce last month. My dad, who has been my backbone this entire time, kept me pushing. We went ahead with my divorce proceedings and as expected, James got nothing out of me thanks to my prenup agreement. When it came time for the custody of my children, he fought hard for full custody at first, but when that was refused he tried to go for equal custody my lawyer, argued how he had been a deadbeat father our entire marriage, how he didn't have a proper job, how his mother was an alcoholic and how he cheated on me and got another woman pregnant. This argument cost James dearly and I was awarded full custody of our children while James would pay me monthly child support checks. Nothing made me feel more satisfied than watching his face droop in sadness and defeat. I looked back to see Mallory looking at me angrily and I gave her a smirk. Just like I had promised, I got what I had wished for. Secondly, coming on to my mother, she has begged and begged me and my dad for forgiveness. My dad has firmly refused to let what she did go so easily and has asked her to go to therapy about her internalized misogyny so she can understand exactly how wrong she was to have treated me this way when I was so vulnerable. I know my parents love each other and it breaks my heart to see them apart, but I do understand why my dad wants to talk to a therapist. My mother, to her credit, has been religiously going to therapy while she continues to stay with her sister. It I don't know if it will help her in any way, but I hope she does change. Although I have blocked Kylie, I am still in contact with her mother. Kylie's mother, just like she had promised me, has cut off all contact with her daughter. She informed me how Kylie has even been removed from her will and they have added me instead. It seems comical to see how karma is slowly but surely catching up to Kylie. I have also heard from the grapevine that Dev doesn't want to marry Kylie and wants nothing to do with the child, just like I had always known. Mallory is furious with Devs and she has already lost two grandchildren James and Nina because of him but he remains adamant in his decisions. As for me, I am doing a lot better since my divorce. I am focused solely on my children for now and don't want to keep holding on to the past. I won't say that this journey has been easy but I will say that I don't regret anything that I have done. I am glad I loved Dev and married him because otherwise, I would not have these two beautiful children. I am also glad he cheated on me because this was the final push that I needed to break away from him otherwise I might have been still stuck in a loveless marriage. I guess everything happens for a reason and I believe in God's plan, always.